Hey guys, welcome and we're going to get to the video editing soon, the color grading of the Sony a7S III and the FX9. But first I just want to talk about something that's really really important and if you are in the film industry or in the storytelling business, maybe you're just a storyteller, so this is a passion of yours, I think that one of the most important things is to make someone feel something. It's like, especially myself, I'm very emotional and I'm very anxious. I think that it's very, very difficult for me to get on in front of the camera and speak because I always get into my head and I psych myself out. But getting back to the topic of making someone feel something, I just played The Last of Us Part Two, And lately I've just been demotivated to make content and creatively I'm like a, I'm in a drought so I just play video games and video games and movies and TV shows I feel like is an escape to sometimes really good TV shows like Community or Friends or Seinfeld if you binge watch it long enough they feel like they're your friends they feel like when you come home you have someone to talk to or watch or be a part of a group of people and it gets you so invested. But one of the promises that I make to myself in creating content is to always end in a happy note. Yes, during the story in Act 1, Act 2, even Act 3, give the message. The truth is important. What you want to deliver to your audience is so important because you want to make someone feel different. You want to show a different perspective to your audience. I just thought that was very important, especially because if you are editing, if you are color grading, you are telling story with your colors. Emotion has multiple layers. Stuff going on in your movie could be color driven, it could be story driven, it can be a collaboration between the actors, the writers, the lighting, the cinematography, and together if you do a really good job, you can make someone feel something that they never have felt before. That's power. I think that is one of the most influential things that we have. You know, all these things, so take that with you. And also, a surprise for you guys, I will leave the LUTs that we create together for the FX9, Cine EI, S-Log3, as well as free LUTs, or just one LUT, for the Atomos ProRes RAW from the Sony external monitor to the Atomos Ninja 5. But okay, let's get right into it. We're going to drop the file. Here is the raw Sony FX9 footage and Sony A7S 3 footage. Okay, so I want to see what we have. This is the FX9. This is the Sony. Let's do the Sony first. So I'm going to drag and drop the Sony. And it looks pretty good. If you go up here to the effects control and master, this is the only setting that I get. Everything is up to date. Everything is completely up to date. When this video gets released, I just updated my Mac, my NLE, Everything is up to date. So this is what I get with Apple Pro Res. Even my Ninja 5 is updated. So let's get to it. Let's go to the waveforms, Lumetri scopes, and everything seems to be exposed properly. So I don't need to mess with that. But if it is clipping, you can drop the shadows or the exposure, for instance. I'm going to just put it a negative one. But let's get a quick edit. I don't want to waste too much of your time. First thing I do is I make sure the contrast is right. Right now there's nothing touching zero. So I'll just go to the curves and I'll bring this down just a little bit. Very little. That, I like that. That looks pretty good. And this is my hero frame so I'm going to stick to this. And then I'm going to increase no, I don't like it when it's too contrasty. Just a little bit like that. 
go to basic correction I'm gonna drop the highlights but I'm gonna increase the whites we've already come very far if you go back here it's pretty good but not ready I'm gonna jack up the contrast by 12 decrease the blacks by just a tad bit increase the whites a little bit more I'm gonna mess with the green add a little bit of green to it because it just looks cooler we'll make it a little bit warmer to 7.5 I'm gonna bump the saturation up to 139 130, 130. Good. I'm going to put some sharpness into it. Uh, 25 faded film. Should we? No, I don't. You can add faded film uh, if you want later. I'm going to drop the vibrance down a little bit just to give it a cooler, more faded look. I'm going to keep this saturation. The way it is. I'm gonna add greens to the just a tad bit here and see what the blue looks like. There you go. So before, after. And it looks like this is really hot. This might have been overexposed. Let's check it out. Go to effects controls, Apple Pro Res, exposure. No. No, leave that alone. So far it looks good. I'm going to go to curves. Put this down a little bit more. Basic correction, maybe the whites are too hot. Increase the shadows just a tad. Drop the blacks. Okay, contrast. We're going to go to curves, go to the red, add a, some points here. I want a little bit more green in the shadows. Uh, very subtly increase the reds and the highlights another three points here add purple to the shadows just a little bit and then add some green to the highlights I'm not going to touch the blue too much but if I did I just grab the mid tones and bring it down that's fine Okay, so let's go to the hue. I love messing with blue. Look at that. Look at how much color we can mess with. That's insane. Um, let's add just a little bit more blue. I'm going to do that again because I don't want to mess with that. Okay. Now I want to get the skin tones correct, but there's too much bleeding of light everywhere. So if I did want to get the skin tones correct, I would just click here. I would go to opacity. I would click this. I would drag it over to somewhere that it doesn't have too much blood, blood, bleeding of the red. So that, that seems fine. Then I go to Lumetri scopes and now we have we have this line. And I think the Sony gets it perfect. I don't want to mess with it. It looks good. Just delete that. And we're going to go down to the green. We could turn the green to purple. Looks really cool. But no, it's not very cinematic. It's kind of goofy. I'm going to check up the blues a little bit. Just very tiny. We're going to drop the blues now and increase. No, just a little bit. 
little bit. Now that I look at it, I want to drop the mid tones more. Bring the shadows down just a little. Okay, color wheels, we're almost done. So if I'm going too fast, you can always just rewind the video. Uh, I just want to try to get this one done pretty quickly because just show you my workflow and also give you the LUT for free. So we go to curves. Now this one's fun. I like to do a little bit complementary colors. Drop the shadows a little bit. Keep. Uh, it's it's almost touching the zero. Sometimes I don't want it to touch the zero. You don't want to crush the details, you know. So I'll probably add a little bit of green, yellow, green. Increase. No, we want to can't tell if I want a darker looking video. But no, let's let's get it a little bit brighter. That's if we had blue, if we had green. I like to see what I'm working with. So I move it around a lot. I move it here. Just a little bit blue. Increase the highlights. To more green, yellow. Something missing. Just increase the exposure a little bit. It's, it's noisy, but it looks like film grain. It doesn't look bad. But I'm just gonna drop it down so it looks a little bit better. I'm gonna undo that because it destroyed the contrast levels. I want to contrast the image. Basic. Shadows. Okay. I'm going to return this back lower just a little bit. We're done. I, I like this. You know, it's not too dramatic. It's not too edited. So you guys can tweak it a little bit on your own if you want. I think it's pretty solid. So let's export this. So when you want to export a LUT, once you're done, so let's go to the clip. We have this Lumetri color here. You can turn it off, turn it on. This is what you're exporting. So you go to right click this and it says export cube. You want to do cube. Uh, desktop, Sony, A7, A7S3, raw, LUT. Okay, save. It's done. So let's delete Lumetri color. Okay. And we're going to try it out. We're going to go to creative. We're going to look. We're going to browse. Go on desktop. Should be here. Sony A7S3 Raw LUT. Open. Boom. Um, I think it looks good. I think it looks. I'm jealous. This guy has great skin. Um, okay, guys. So that is the Sony A7S III LUT. Let's delete it. Let's delete this and drag on the FX9 footage. So I'm gonna bring this right here. Uh, change sequence settings. And change the sequence setting. Let's get a hero frame. It's kind of a weird look. That's good. Okay. Lumetri, this is our scopes, so everything else. We want a really cool, dramatic look. So we go to the scopes. I want to start off with the curves first. I'm going to drop it down. I want it moody and dark. Increase the highlights. Get that contrast in there. I'm going to add green. Just a tad bit of green. Make it a little 
older just a little bit increase the no I'm not increase increase the whites increase the whites a little drop the shadows decrease the highlights punch the contrast uh, before I punch the contrast I want to try to add a, a contrast with the curves it tends to be more smoother so try to do it with the curves before you just add contrast in right there's pretty good okay just put that peak on it a little bit what else do I want I mean, I, now I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast I'm gonna bring the blacks just to barely touching I don't want it to touch increase the shadows a little and then lower the overall exposure contrasty enough almost we're gonna get two more contrast soon I'm gonna add color to it so I would say to 160 160 152 let's add some sharpness Let's add some vibrancy, 28.8, that looks good. Now this is where the look comes in, you know? Let's add blue, let's add a little bit of blue. No blue, no blue. No. Just a little bit. Aqua blue. We're gonna add right there. So we did a complementing color on the wheel. We chose one on this side and then we chose one on that side. Tint balance. I'm gonna reduce the tint balance to just a little bit lower. You can mess with this to your liking when you are editing yourself. So now, most of the stuff I do for color is right here. So if you do down, it's on the green. Increase the reds a little bit. Just a little. Now I'm going to add purple to it. It's going to make it a little bit more blue. Then I'm going to add yellows. Not too much. Then I'm going to get the mid-tones of the blue curve and just drag it down and that adds an overall yellow cast to it. Very subtle yellow cast. So that's with the curves. All of that's with the curves. I love the curves. So I'm going to go to the hue. I always love messing with blue. Blue is one of the most, one of my most favorite colors. So I'm going to just push it up so it's a little green. I don't want to touch his skin tones. See, that, that, that looks horrible. So I'm going to Command Z. I think we're going to have to, because it's not, we're going to need the skin tone line. Let's go to Effects, Controls. We're going to go to Opacity. Make sure the opacity is on video. You select video. Click the circle. Drag it down. That's his face right here. Overall, his face right there. Then you're going to go to Lumetri Scopes, and it is on the line, but we can make it more up. So if you put it up, it's going to go this way. It's going to go towards more purple. If you pull it down, it's going to go towards yellow. And we want it on the line, but just a little bit above. That's good. I'm going to go to Effects Control, Delete. Looking good, it's looking good. Um, I'm going to add saturation to blue and green, just the middle of the hue versus saturation line. I'm just going to jack it up because I think it looks awesome. However, the LUT will not work with everything, just uniquely with this. So when you are designing LUTs, make sure you don't do stuff like this because 
it's not very friendly to other footage. So just put it there, especially the hue versus hue. You want to be as subtle with the hue versus hue as possible if you want to use this LUT for other settings because you're really going to mess up your colors if you don't know what you're doing. So we can get a darker backdrop or a little bit brighter, but it does give a little bit of banding and noise. If you increase it, so much noise comes up. So I'm not going to mess with Luma. If I do, I'm going to add it to his skin tones. So just a little bit on the reds and yellows. That's what we have so far. I'm not going to explain this, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, so go to Lumetri Scopes. I don't want to drop the shadows because it's already touching. But for instance, if we bring blue here, and then we jack up the yellow, we get a teal and orange look, depending on how much of it you want to do. And then let's increase the highlights a little bit. I like to test it to see what it looks like. Ooh, that's nice. So red towards red looks really good, in my opinion. I'm gonna drop this a little bit more. Now, this is not the teal and orange that everyone else has. It's very subtle, which I like. I think it looks good. Um, we're almost done, guys. We're almost done. If you did want to color grade the skin tones, you can use this, but I can make a video all on this alone. It's very complicated at times and not so friendly, but it can really help if you want to separate objects. Uh, you can also add by clicking this, you can add another Lumetri color effect. So you can stack Lumetri colors. And I think this is very helpful when, for instance, let's say you have a blue background and a skin tone in the, in the front. This is a perfect example, him. You want to add multiple stacks, select the background and select his skin. So you can have a lot more control on both. So hopefully that made sense. You can select his skin, separate it from the background, or you can select the background and add color to that or take away color from that, or add color to his skin or take away color from his skin. So you have a lot more control if you do use this, but I would recommend stacking the Lumetri color, not doing it all in one tab. For instance, if I do say add Lumetri color effect and I go to effects control here, there's a second Lumetri color. If I click this, this will change into the brand new Lumetri color. Nothing's here, you see? But we don't need it. Um, but for the sake of a quick, quick tutorial, I'm gonna go to color, HSL secondary. I'll select his skin, probably right here. Click the gray. Um, let's see if we could find all of it. Don't mess with this too much, I want to keep this. I think that's a pretty good mask. No, we're not getting everything. Oh. No, that's getting better, much better. It's, it's almost there. I mean, I don't think it's gonna get that much better than that, but I, I wish the neck wasn't. It's okay. We're gonna add blur. Denoise, just a little bit more blur. And now when I turn this off, I can control his skin more. So, you know, it's, it's bleeding on his shoulder. This is just an example, uh, but it doesn't affect the background too much. So if you could dial this in more,
Anyways, that's just a quick example. It get very complicated. Um, overall, I think it looks good. And increase the shadows. Yeah. <laughs> I think that looks great. I think that looks awesome. All right, guys, you right click, export cube, name your LUT, FX9 simple color grade for YouTube. Free. Desktop, this is for S log 3, Cine EI. Um, so S log 3 would work. And then desktop save. We're done. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna put it in the link down below so you could just go to the folder, download all its contents, the LUTs, not the actual footage. I do have another link, I'll put that too. It's the footage. So you can actually download the footage and try the LUT on there or try following along and creating your own LUT. Um, so that would be really awesome. Also, just keep that in mind when you're creating your content. You know, sometimes it's not about what other people think. It's about how it makes you feel when you're creating it. So that's very important. And for me, it's been really hard trying to please other people. And I'm trying to care less about the dislike button every time I post, you know, it freaks me out. Oh my God, 50 dislikes. But, you know, if it makes me happy and if I can get it out there, that's important. Don't let fear stop you from posting your content. And thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this channel. And till next time, enjoy the free lights. Peace.